So I wanted to start today talking about where plastic actually comes from. Some of you will know this already, but plastic originally started out life as oil. It's then mixed with natural gases and chemicals to produce different types of plastic. But getting the oil is really difficult. You have to drill for oil, um, sometimes on the seabed and underground. The oil tankers then take that oil to oil refineries, which are really bad for the environment as well, producing potentially harmful emissions. The refinery takes the crude oil and turns it into refined oil, types you see in those big oil barrels. From there, however, the oil can go into different kind of phases, I suppose. We're interested in how it becomes plastic, but from there it could become things like gas for your car. Again, the problem is the amount of emissions that are caused during this process. So once you have the oil refined into barrels, it then travels all over the world using an assortment of lorries and trains and planes and all sorts. Again, producing emissions all the time. Uh, we call this the carbon footprint. The carbon footprint for a, a barrel of oil is really high. That's why... When we're designing products, we like to use recycled materials, or at least make sure that the product itself can be recycled easily. Once it travels, um, it then ends up in factories where the plastic is actually turned into other products. The factories themselves can also produce harmful emissions, so this whole process can potentially be very damaging to the environment. The factories, um, we're starting to see cleaner factories uh, which produce fewer emissions, which is obviously good news for the environment. But what happens next? These products then get shipped back all over the world uh, using shipping containers, flying them all over the world. Again, bad news for the environment. So that's a very quick overview of how plastic is made and ends up as products in your own home. The next thing I want to talk about very briefly is the different types of plastics. There's two main groupings. They're known as thermoplastics and thermosets. The big difference between the two, um, and you do need to know this for uh, your N5 DNA, is that thermoplastics can be uh, remade again and again into different products. Therefore, really good for recycling. Thermosets, on the other hand, can't be recycled. As soon as they're made into a product, that's it. So with our thermoplastics, you commonly see these um, in products around the home, such as uh, lamps and hair dryers and, and such like. So thermoplastics are better for the environment because they can be recycled. Thermosets, on the other hand, have good properties. They're able to um, be made into heat-resistant uh, products like kettles and so on. But once that kettle's broken, that's it for the plastic, I'm afraid. Third thing I want to talk about, and this is going to um, you know, be a big part of the next uh, the task that you guys will be doing, is discuss plastic properties. Within DNM, you need to be confident and comfortable talking about many different types of plastic properties. But at the same time, you also need to be uh, aware of what the different plastics are and be, like I say, comfortable talking about them and selecting sensible products, uh, plastics for your uh, products. So, for example, um, we have a grouping of plastics known as the hard plastics also known as engineering plastics. 
the hard plastics are able to take uh, higher impacts than other types of plastics. So there might be um, scenarios where uh, it's really important that the plastic itself can take big hits. We use terms such as impact resistance and scratch resistance when discussing hard plastics. We'll get to the different types of plastics shortly. The next type of plastic that I want to talk about are soft plastics. The plastics themselves um, are bendier uh, just naturally. Useful for when you need a product to flex and give. So we call these the soft plastics. You can use words like flexible, bendy, and that new one, memory, and we discuss plastic memory where a plastic itself can spring back to its original form. We see this with things like bendy rulers. The, the ruler can be bent out of shape and then spring back to its original form. That's called plastic memory. The third grouping of plastics I want to talk about are hygienic plastics. And we see these plastics used where um, we're requiring uh, foodstuffs to be contained, such as bottles or sandwich packets. What we see with the hygienic plastics is that they have little flex and little memory. If you squeeze that plastic bottle, the plastic does not jump back out um, into its original form. Instead, it crushes down into a smaller uh, form itself. So that's hard plastics, soft plastics, and hygienic plastics. Within DNM, what we like to do uh, when we teach things is instead of just giving you all the information, we like to try and help your brain make sense of this and help your brain recall this information. So what I'm drawing here is one of the methods that we use to try and remember our plastics. Now these are our thermoplastics. Remember the thermoplastics are the ones that can be melted down and remade into other stuff, which is really good for recycling. So in order to remember our thermoplastics, we come up with this triangle. The triangle has uh, six sections which represent six different thermoplastics. And we use a silly phrase to try and help us remember the first letter of each of our plastics. The silly phrase is, all plastic people have plastic legs. In a nod to our friends, the Lego men. So all plastic people have plastic legs, gives us the first letter for each of the plastics that we need to remember. It also puts them in an order for us, but we'll cover that shortly. So when you think of plastics, and you're struggling to remember which one's which, I want you to remember this Lego man um, and the fact that he's uh, kind of helping us out, I suppose. At the top end, we have ABS and PC, which stands for polycarbonate, the middle plastics PP and HDPE, and finally PET and LDPE. So at the top, we have our hard plastics, in the middle, our soft plastics, and at the bottom, our hygienic plastics. The types of uh, terms that you need to be familiar with, terms such as impact resistance, its ability to take hits if you remember the hammer hitting the plastic. Scratch resistance, where you're requiring a plastic or a product to be able to deal with um, continual kind of scuffing. Our soft plastics, we're using terms such as flex and give. The plastic's ability to actually bend and then um, spring back into its original shape. Remember, that's called memory. And finally, our hygienic plastics, which um, you know have little flex and little memory. If you crush a hygienic uh, plastic such as PET, all you're gonna end up with is a crushed bottle. So we know that different plastics have different properties. 
and the designer will choose a certain plastic based on what function the product is doing. A product which is going to take impacts and hits needs to be one of the hard plastics. If it's more important that the product itself flexes, the designer will choose a soft plastic. And finally, if the product's going to be used for foodstuffs or such, the designer will choose a hygienic plastic. So in this part of the presentation, I'm going to show you some plastics from around the home um, and I'm going to discuss the decisions that the designer has taken in choosing uh, those plastics. So, we'll get this out of the way. First up, PlayStation 4 controller. The designer has realized that the controller itself is going to take hits, it's going to take impacts, people might even rage quit and slam their controller off the desk or chuck it at the wall. You might have even been guilty about that uh, once or twice. Similarly, the buttons themselves need to be really hard wearing. They're going to be pressed thousands of times, maybe even with the nail. So it's really important that the product um, and the design uh, and the plastic itself uh, withstands that sort of abuse. Interestingly, with the PlayStation controller, the actual uh, directional controls are, are known as rubberized ABS. They have this kind of rubbery texture to them. But the shell, the buttons, um, that's all ABS. It's able to take big impacts. If we look at another example of ABS, we have this Lego um, King's Cross Station, Harry Potter, um, Lego Station, unfinished. ABS is used for Lego and it has been since the 80s. If you consider Lego itself, it's exceptionally strong. Um, you know, there is very little give to it. If you were to try and squeeze these bricks together, they're not going to shift, they're not going to move, they're not going to deform. So it's ext extremely hard as a plastic. Similarly, if we run our nail across the top of that, we're not going to scratch the plastic. Again, uh, we call that surface hardness. It's very, very hard. And lastly, if you've ever stood on some Lego barefoot, um, you'll absolutely know about it. So that's ABS uh, used for this Lego station. I should also say that the um, ABS itself comes in a wide range of colors. So pretty much if you can design it and you want it in a certain color, ABS will be available in that color. So that's ABS used for Lego. The next thing I want to talk through is not necessarily the box right now, rather the game within the box. You might or might not know this, that the disc itself is made from plastic. Again, it's an exceptionally hard wearing plastic. This time, rather than ABS, it's polycarbonate, one of the other hard plastics. Polycarbonate is extremely transparent. It has this uh, fine um, layer of aluminium, which allows the data to be recorded onto the disc. But the disc itself is made from polycarbonate, a very, very hard plastic. Now, when we get into the uh, soft plastic examples, uh, we can actually have a look at things like bottle caps. In this instance, a Lucozade bottle cap. Soft plastics actually do deform and they have that thing, plastic memory. It wants to spring back to its original shape. Okay, but it's nowhere near as um, strong as ABS. We mentioned that surface hardness. If I take my nail and scratch across the surface, I don't know if you can see that or not, if the camera's picking up on it, but the surface itself will be scratched up. It's a much softer plastic than ABS. Similarly, if we look at this old school uh, phone case, 
you could almost kind of twist it up. That's a very, very soft plastic. And again, why is the designer chosen to use a soft plastic such as this? Well, the phone's inside, uh, impact on the corner, on the street or whatever, um, that's going to absorb the impact and spread it across the surface of the case and hopefully not damage the phone within the case. Okay. So that's why the designer would choose a soft plastic for something like a phone case. If we go back to um, the, the game itself again, the case itself is quite soft. Again, it doesn't pass the scratch test. We could scratch that game case up. Interestingly, why do we want it to be soft? Well, we have something called a live hinge or a living hinge which allows this disc, uh, the game disc, to open and close thousands of times. Okay, the plastic is very soft, it allows that to happen. Um, obviously it's strong enough that it wouldn't just tear, but it does allow that living hinge to open and close the game case again and again. So finally, I want to talk about an icon of design, the Coke bottle. I need to turn it sideways. Um, the designer would have to consider hygiene when designing a plastic bottle such as this. It's really important that the plastic itself doesn't make the, the juice in this case taste funny. Um, water bottles, for example, are made out of hygienic uh, plastics such as polyethylene. Um, water can stay within those bottles for many months without the plastic itself making the uh, water uh, taste weird. So again, it's not impacting a taste or chemical kind of into the water. Similarly, uh, sandwich packets used to be made commonly out of polyethylene. So that's all for now. I hope you found this interesting. What I'd like you to do is have a look around your home, see what plastics you can find, what products you can find that are made from plastic, and then think to yourself, why has the designer chosen that certain plastic? Is it a really hard plastic, a soft plastic, or hygienic plastic? Okay, thanks for listening. See you later. Bye.